have a one on one for us, you know? And it's good that we can have a relationship, a personal relationship with our Lord and Savior. Before we get into anything else, I want to let you know that the clown is going to sit by the bathroom behind um, the living room space. Tent, and she's going to be giving away um, potato chips and candy bags. And I want everyone to know hey, that if God face. touches your heart to come to the front, and for anyone that has a staff badge on, and that you want to be prayed on, because I feel like converting myself again today. Today I feel like giving my heart to Jesus one more time. I don't know how many of you, this is not just for the unbelievers, or the ones that are crunching, or the ones that don't walk. This is for everybody. Every black, every day we need to touch the cross. And I'm going to convert myself again today. Glory to God. I want you to know that whenever you feel like having a prayer, or you want to take it personal, there's a prayer station. Before we get into anything else, before my voice leaves again, I haven't been able to introduce um, the ministry or any of the ministries that are here. <clears throat> and if anyone could just um, gather their thoughts, can anyone gather their thoughts and let's um, get into communion? Let's grab it back again. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I want to introduce uh, the ministry. I wasn't able to do so because of the rain and the backup. My name is Eva Sands and I come from Blessed Arena Cell. We're located at 579 Clinton Avenue. Um, my pastor is a hot day, let's be honest. Every Saturday I'm at Sea Park from 1 to 3, doing a 12 step biblical principle where we are, uh, we gather, we fellowship. And when we talk about recovery, I want you to know that we're not talking about or a recovery of drugs. We don't subject it or we don't limit it to just substance abuse. When we speak about recovery, we speak about the addict. When we speak about addiction, we're speaking about someone that's been slain in sin. When we speak about recovery, we're talking about a Jesus that, that broke the veil and that he covered us. Glory to God. And I want to bring this forward. You know why? Because there's a really big misunderstanding what recovery is. There's a really big misunderstanding what an addict is. Let me explain something to you. Before I picked up drug, I was an addict. Before I picked up the drug, I was an, I was an addiction behavior because I have an addictive behavior and sin. Glory to God. The only thing was, I'm sorry. Recovery isn't, isn't a process that takes detox pills or a program, a three-day program. When you say recovery, it's bringing it back into a former state. Regaining when we talk about addictive behavior, we're talking about someone that does something repertorial over and over. And after that they've done repertorial over and over, it becomes involuntary. Meaning that you become the slave of your sin. And you know the word of God says that we cannot serve two masters. Because we love one and hate the other. Glory to God. I don't know how many of you think. Sometimes, you know, when I used to go, um, and, and people used to give me uh, pamphlets in church. When I used to be, you know, doing what I wanted to do in the streets of the Bronx. I remember I used to go home and open up my purse to see if I had any other money. And I used to have a, a pocketbook filled of church church um, papers. Amen? And the good thing about it is, is that God allowed me to be free, set me free from drugs. Yes, set me free from all types of, Hallelujah. Uh, of addiction, set me free from lust, set me free from being a, a wanderer, a, a, a vagabond, like you want to say, a wanderer in the streets, walking around like I didn't know what I was at in my mind. But let me tell you about step one, because today I'm going to preach about step one. We ain't even going to get into the word. I'm going to tell you about step one. Step one says that we are powerless. And that our lives have come unmanageable. Yes. When we speak about step two, it says that we have come to understand that there's a power stronger than us that can restore us. Yes. To I don't know about many of you, but I know that I was insane. I don't know about many of you, but I know that I lived a life of insanity. Glory to God. And when Jesus be recovering the Holy Spirit of God help me, I just surrender without even knowing. And a lot of us believe that we live in a sinful way or we're not serving God the right way, that there are things that we need to leave before we can come into the presence of the Lord. But here I'm going to tell you today that God says to come as you are. If you're smoking cigarettes, come as you are. Yes. If you're drinking, come as you are. Yes. If you're sleeping under the tree, come as you are. Yes. If you're walking down the street and you know what you're doing, come, come as, as you are. are. Because Jesus that I serve tells you, come, come as, as you are. are. Hallelujah. You don't need to leave nothing. You don't need to do anything. Come into his presence. And I guarantee you that the Holy Spirit will do the rest. The only thing we need is the desire. The desire 
the desire. Thank you. The desire to not. All we need is the desire to do so. And the 12 step biblical principles, it's a, it's, it's, it's a form that we use. We use the 12 steps. We still go to NA meetings. We still affiliate with NA. We do all recovery. But we live in principles. And when we talk about principles, we live, we, we follow the principles of our life. And today I want to speak only about the two steps. And I'm going to go into the book of Mark quickly. Glory to God. When you go into the book of Mark, chapter 5, 1, step 1 and 2 is in there. And it was amazing because I wasn't going to be a speaker, but if I'm going to present my 12 step biblical principles, I want to be able to transmit the cause of it. I didn't know how to Christ maybe like seven years ago, and I served God back maybe when I was younger. But when I didn't know that I was still in bondage, I put the drug down. I was clean, but I did not live free. I put the drug down. I put the cigarettes down. I stopped fornicating. I stopped walking the streets. I tried to get my kids back. I tried everything. But I was not free. And I need to say today that the only one that can set us free is for Jesus. And we need to live with principles. This is not about you want to give your heart to I'm not inviting no one to church. I'm inviting you to have yes. an intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I'm not going to hunt you down. I'm not going to take a number. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to knock on your door like the job of a humble witness. I ain't going to do none of that. Because I know the God that I serve in the same way that he lifted me up without even me realizing that I was chosen. And God today is coming for his chosen ones. When I came into God, I remember I was in church and this, this preacher came from Florida maybe four years ago. And I wanted to be prophesied too. And I remember that he came up to me, he said, God says to you today, I forgive you. While I was serving God, I didn't believe that he could forgive me for the things that I've done. The way I walked in the streets, the way I, I, I sold all of my furniture, all of my gold, I gave my soul to the devil. And I lived, paid a high price to live a low life. I don't know how many, how many witnesses I can have here. If I can just get two people to say, you know what? Amen to that. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and, and recovery, is, it's for me, it's a great thing to do because it teaches us principles. When we get into the book of Mark, I have a big thing. Uh, let me read it. It says that Jesus came into a region where there was a man that was in the tombs. And that he was chained and he had shackles. And it said that he walked around those tombs day and night, and that he picked up stones and he cut himself. And that he hollered so loud, and no one could subdue him, no one could tame him. There was absolutely no one that could hold him down. Glory to God. And it also says, as we go through the passage, it speaks about how God said to him, What's your name? And he said, my name is Legion. Glory to God. I have to stop putting the name of all the legions that I walk with. Because I walk with a whole bunch of legions. Crazy. I walk with a whole bunch of them. And I had to stop pointing them as they were. Glory to God. It speaks about a region. And a region is a piece. It's part of Connecticut. But today is Washington Park. This is the region that God is passing through today. And today God is saying to anyone that's in shackles, anyone that's been chained up, anyone that's been walking around and we're hopeless, anyone that's walking around, God is saying today, you know, I'm passing through. I'm passing through Washington Avenue. Glory to God. It said that the man begged Jesus. Begged Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Excuse me. The most, the most um, intriguing and the most powerful thing out of this whole chapter speaks about when the guy goes right back and people look at him and say, this was the guy that was insane. And it says that he sat down in his right mind. Glory to God. We're talking about a man that walked in the tombs, a man that's cut himself, a man that was chained hand and foot. And it says that when Jesus passed by, he got off of the boat, 
and that he fell to his knees and he spoke to every demon. Glory to God. And instantly this man was sitting down with his right mind and it says well dressed. <laughs> Glory to God. And that's what Jesus is telling us today. He's saying, you know, I'm passing through and I want to give you a sound mind. Praise God. I want to give you peace in your heart. God is the God of giving. God is a wonderful God. And I don't know how many of you can embrace that today. And if anyone decides right now to come up into a prayer, we open for prayer right now. But give your heart to God. Say, Jesus, you know, I've been doing some stuff. But today I decide to take the first step. I am powerless. My life has become unmanageable. Then take the second step and say, you know what? I came to believe that there's a power stronger than me that can restore me into sanity. You take those two steps. Take the two steps today. This is a recovery, I mean recovery, um, recovery service, glory to God, trouble with me. And there's two steps. When I went to church, I said, oh, I'm not going to go up in front to say that I'm a sinner. I don't feel like repenting. But I did tell God that I was powerless. I did tell God that my life was unmanageable. I did find out that there was something stronger that would restore me to sanity because I lived in sin. Glory to God. So we're going we're gonna to see if we can open this up a minute. If anyone feels the urge to come up and give their heart to Christ.